So what's missing and what can Democrats do about it? Let's discuss with Scripps News political analyst Steve Schmidt. Steve is the founder of The Warning newsletter and podcast on Substack. Steve, good to see you here. So I want to take this maybe in two bites tonight. First, picking issues you want to highlight, then how you actually talk about them. So first, I guess, selection. Under President Biden, you know, the U.S. is producing more oil and gas than we have in our history. And he doesn't talk about it, yet people are really worried about things like gas prices. So how do you pick which things to elevate? Well, you just heard a report that preceded my joining you where the correspondent outlined the White House strategy to defeat Donald Trump in the election, talked about that we're about to start informing the American people about the president's accomplishments. We're going to hire more people in states. We're going to have more staff. We're going to spend $14 million in advertising. And the reality is that there is nothing new to learn for the American people about either of these candidates, President Biden, former President Trump. Uh, they are as proverbially wet as you could possibly be. Imagine someone being pushed in the pool. Uh, once they're in, you can't get any more wet. There's nothing new to learn. And so the idea that now in the final 182 days, the American people will suddenly turn their attention to what the president did over the last four years is nonsensical. All presidential elections are about the future. I've heard James Carville talk about this, and it's true, and it holds for my political career. First election campaign I've ever seen where the candidates don't talk about tomorrow. They don't talk about the future, with the exception of Trump, who's promising to open detention camps and to put his political opponents into them. So it is a strategy you're seeing that's just not resonating with, with Americans, and I think you'll see that. Uh, bear itself out when these ads don't move many numbers. And remember, right now, the incumbent president, Biden, is behind in all these swing states. If the election were tomorrow, he would lose. Trump would win. And Trump is campaigning from Steve, the courthouse. Stephen, isn't there a, the, a bit of the political reality here is that President Biden spent a lot of his political capital during his during his first term on things that just aren't top of mind for voters? I mean, based on the polls, it doesn't look like bridges, computer chips, or fixing COVID are going to be issues that decide this election. I think that the White House has a massive communications deficit with the American people. The president doesn't appear often. He has passed up opportunities famously to communicate uh, during the Super Bowl, for example. And so the reality is the people in the country don't have a handle on any of this. And I think if you look at the images from the White House Correspondents' Dinner a week or so ago, an overwhelming majority of the people in that room, I suspect, believe that President Biden will win re-election quite easily and think that this strategy makes sense. But the reality of it is, these are all the things the president promised to do during his first campaign. This campaign, like all presidential campaigns, must be about the future for it to catch on and have any currency with voters. And that is, to me, from my perspective, looking at it from my experience doing this, that's what the deficit is, and that's what's unusual in this campaign right now. Can you help now. me? Let's do a test case, because, okay, let's say Americans are not going to salute and say, thank you, Mr. President, for the bridges. <laughs> they want promises for the future. They're definitely not. How do you talk, <laughs> uh, yeah, how do you talk about something like inflation, let's say, which there is good, bad, and neutral right now that they could highlight? How would you talk about it? There's a lot of research in a presidential election historically that suggests the only economic data that matters is the correlation between how much money people are making, wages, and how much things cost, prices. And there are high prices across the economy. The American people feel it. Uh, at the end, the election's a choice. And the choice is between the president and Trump. And the president 
has to force a decision, has to crystallize the choice. And having an argument, which the White House has been having with the American people about whether things are expensive or not, they are, isn't the best way to frame that choice. But nevertheless, the White House is in this persistent argument asserting that this is one of the best economies ever. And they point to numbers as opposed to listening to the emotions, the feelings, the gut of the American people. This is an emotional mm. decision, not a statistical one. And I think that's what this White House doesn't particularly understand as they go out and talk about these things. I think the president understands it, that he's shown that he's understood it for his entire career. So he's been very connected, but there's something with the campaign. Another announced this, this week that we're gonna see less of the president. Less is more is the strategy, and that strategy is simply not working when judged against the poll numbers and what will be a very, very close race. Steve, I feel like I talk to you a lot. I feel like I talk to you more than I talk to my dad, either on the race or the race weekend. And it seems like every week we're talking about a different Republican primary and how Nikki Haley is still attracting votes. Last night in Indiana, what? She got 128,000 Republicans to vote for. We keep waiting for Republicans to come home. They ain't home yet, Steve. Nope. I don't think they're going to be. So long as there are elections where Republican voters can walk into a booth and her name is there, they will pull the lever. And what we saw last night was 22 percent. That's a big number, big protest vote for somebody who has no chance. The question is, the great unknown is where do those 22 percent flow in the general election? The majority of them will be Trump voters. But how many just refuse to do it could be the key to the election. And these are all of the things that go into that alchemy of data that produces the polls. And one of the reasons the polls have been off election after election is that the data that goes into who is going to turn out has been so off. And this is a great mystery. The other swirling mystery in this election that bears in on this is where do these people go? Do they go right. to Robert F. Kennedy? Is that a vote that takes care of business with them? That it's not a vote for Biden, it's not a vote for Trump. And there is an orthodoxy, a conventional wisdom among a lot of Democrats that that Robert F. Kennedy vote is going to hurt Joe Biden but not necessarily so. That's another open question in this race as I look at it 182 days out. Well, okay. Alchemy of data. I think that could be your new substack. I like that. I like that. Steve Schmidt, as always, good to see you. We'll be right back.